Alrighty, so uh, here we are to the last part of our fun with fractions unit. Uh, the last section here is about slope. And plainly put, this is a line on a graph. You've seen them before. It's how fast the line goes up or how fast the line goes down. That's the slope. And we'll talk about that in the next several slides. Here we have the definition, slope. And you want to maybe pause to write this down. This, the ratio, remember that's fraction, right? That describes the tilt of a line. Positive and negative changes the direction. For instance, positive goes up. And we always count slope left to right. So up left to right is positive. Down left to right is negative. Um, fractions, less than 1 makes it flatter. It's like here, notice 2 fifths is my slope. That's smaller than 1. And a fraction bigger than 1, in this case 5 has, makes it steeper. And you can use these as your two examples here. Um, again, slopes that we're talking about. The first component of slope that I want to talk about is called the rise. That's the vertical change. Yeah, it just to help you remember, vertical means up and down. Always the numerator. So when I give you the slope, the number on top is called the rise. Sometimes, and we'll work on counting that or, and calculating that later. So here, I notice that as I go from left to right, that my line is going up. And it goes up by 2. You can count it over here from the left side. If I go from this dot to this dot, I go up by 1, 2. And just like when we did dilations, you don't count the intersections. You count the spaces between. Like, so there's two spaces between as this one goes up. Or if it goes down from left to right, it has a negative rise. So, or a fall, you might call it, but we call it a negative rise. So this one goes down by 5. So if I go from this dot to this dot, because you're going left to right, this one goes down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we represent that with a negative 5. Again, the rise, or the change in y, technically, Remember, this is the y-axis, is always on the top. This is the rise. The second component of slope is the run. Run is how far from left to right it goes. And again, we always count left to right. So that, again, that rise was up and down. But the numerator, or the denominator, I'm sorry, is the horizontal change. That's how far left to right, how far it runs out. So here, it's always, again, the denominator. So here, notice this one, I go from left to right, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This one, I go from left to right, I go 1, 2. Now, your run is always going to be a positive number. So the, po the negative part can be in the top. It doesn't have to be, but it can be. But the denominator is always going to be positive. So again, the run. I like this picture. I found it several years ago. thought it was fun. Kind of to help you understand the difference between a positive and negative slope. So once you're done writing a slope, you always stop and look at the picture. Look at the slope and decide, is it positive or negative? So did I make a mistake? You know, things like that. So like this one, if I go up from left to right, then you'll see it, again, going up from left to right. That is a positive slope. Left to right going up. Left to right going down is a negative slope. And again, you can read what the, what the pig has to say here. If it's perfectly flat, Perfectly flat is zero. Perfectly flat is zero. Perfectly straight up and down is undefined. And you do need to add that into your notes somewhere. So positive slope goes up from left to right. Negative slope goes down from left to right. Perfectly flat is a zero slope. And we'll calculate each of these. And straight up and down is an undefined slope. And we'll talk about why that is. It has to do with division by zero. Okay, a little more here. This time we're talking about the y-intercept. It's the coordinate where the graph of a line intersects the y-axis. So here I've graphed this line. Now, this 2, 5 thing, that's not the line. That's me counting the slope. But this is the line. And where it intersects the y-axis, remember the y-axis is the vertical one? So this one intersects it at the point, see it right there, I'm pointing to it, at the point 0, 2. Notice it has the form 0, b. So I'm going to write that on here. So the y-intercept right here is the point 0, so there it is again, is the point 0, 2. Because if you start at the origin, you don't go, any, you don't go anywhere on the x-axis. You just go straight up uh, towards the, uh, on the y-axis. So again, that's that point 0, 2. So y-intercept. Well, if we have a y-intercept, we may have an x-intercept. 
And you may not always have both. It depends on the line. We'll talk about that later, too. Notice this time it's the point A0. Or it's, you know, so it's reversed of the, uh, uh, of the y-intercept. So it's where it intersects the x-axis. So right here on this one. And this is the point on this one. Let's count it. Um, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's the point negative 5, 0. And again, that's the x-intercept, where it intersects the x-axis. Kind of makes sense, right? So a linear equation is an equation whose graph is a straight line. It has linear equation. So um, there's lots of forms they can take. There's standard form, which is ax plus by equals c. It might look something like 3x plus 2y equals negative 7. We can put it in slope-intercept form, and we'll talk about that in the next slide. But again, it's any line, or any graph, uh, an equation, rather, that creates a straight line when you graph it. The slope-intercept form of a line is this. It's in this format. And the neat thing about this form of a line, and the other class gets a lot more, and you'll get a lot more of this next year on it, is that you can see the slope right here in the line. So if I gave you the following equation, if I said 2 equals, I'm sorry, <laughs> not 2, I'm going for slope-intercept form here. If I said y equals 2 thirds x plus 4. From that, you would know that this is my slope. So you could say slope is 2 thirds. So um, um, up to over 3, right? And I know that my y-intercept is 4. In other words, this is the point zero four. So literally from this one form of the line, I could graph the entire thing. But again, that's something you'll spend time on next year. This part's one of those topics that we just kind of throw in for fun because it's fraction related. Uh, it's division by zero. And this is why also the slope of a line uh, that is straight up and down is also called undefined. So here's the idea. If I say the number four divided by zero, what number is it? What's the answer to that? You may have already learned that's undefined. But the idea is we gotta know, kinda know why. And the reason why is that the answer just doesn't make sense. Let me show you why here. So if I say, and this part you want to put in your notes, if I say that x, um, is some magic number x, equals 4 divided by 0, right? This can help me solve what is 4 divided by 0, right? So if I say it's some magic number x equals 4 divided by 0, I don't know what that number is yet, so let's try to prove what it is. It could be 0, right? It might be 4. I don't know. That's the real trick here. So you can all agree with me that x over 1 is still x, right? Nothing changes. And that still equals my 4 over 0. Now, I know we've learned how to use cross products to solve for x, right? 0 times x, 1 times 4. So let's do that. We're going to say 0x equals, so there's this cross product, equals 1 times 4, which is 4. Well, I want to divide off that 0, right? Well, actually, you know what? I don't even have to go that far. I have to go that far. What's 0 times anything? Right, 0. So does the number 0 ever equal the number 4? No, it doesn't. And since the number 0 can never equal the number 4, we say that anything divided by 0 is undefined. Now, there's other reasons for this, too, that you could use a much more complicated explanation. And I'll likely include that in one of your videos. There's a Khan Academy video I'm really fond of that goes through that. But again, the easy example says, well, if, zero, if, if uh, any number divided by 0, you don't know what it is, Set it equal to a variable and try to prove it. Try to see what it's equal to. You end up with a statement that makes no sense. 0 divided by 4 is undefined because 0 can't equal 4. So if you head into Schoology, I'm going to include that link uh, to the Khan Academy video, Dividing by 0, and he gives a really cool explanation. Most you need to know is here, again, our idea of uh, it kind of breaks down, gives a statement that makes no sense.